So just a few days ago, I made a video talking about how stacked UFC 299 was, but how I thought that there was going to be a new main event, and I have a new theory on that. But this video, UFC 299 is even more stacked, as recently Dana White just announced after UFC 296 in that post-fight press conference that he does, Kevin Holland will be taking on Michael Page on this card, the UFC has officially signed him, Piotr Jan taking on Song Dong. I like that fight a lot. Jeff Neal versus Ian Gary, I like that fight as well, and he made it official that Gilbert Burns will be taking on JDM at UFC 299, but before I break down and give some quick predictions and talk about those matchups, here's my theory. I think that the UFC and maybe even Dana White himself expected Colby Covington to defeat Leon Edwards. Colby Covington throughout this week has been saying that he really wanted to fight in Miami and he really wanted to headline a card in Miami at some point in 2024, this card is in Miami. And more importantly than that as well, um, UFC 299 on the website, as I showed in my last video, you could see that UFC 299 didn't have O'Malley versus Vera 2 next to it. It was UFC 299 TBD versus TBD. And Dana White even said that he was waiting for things to play out on the UFC 296 card before he started doing some matchmaking for the 2024 cards. I think Colby Covington was meant to headline this event. I think that's what the UFC wanted. Leon Edwards has ruined that. And honestly, Leon Edwards didn't take a lot of damage against Colby Covington. Why don't we just do Leon Edwards defending his belt against Bilal Muhammad or Shavkat Rakhmanov? You make your choice on this card. I, I just don't see why not. Let's just do it. But aside from that, now that I've got that out of the way, my little theory that I do have out of the way... Let's talk about the fights that Dana White just announced because they are some pretty good ones and I'm quite excited for them to be honest. This card looks really good and if this is UFC 299, UFC 300 is going to be amazing. 2024 is a fantastic year to be a UFC fan so if you haven't already please do subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be talking about everything UFC and MMA related in 2024. And now with all that being said let's now get into these breakdowns here. Burns vs. Jack Della Maddalena. I'm going to make this one quick, as I have actually already talked about it before in a previous video, as it was announced by Benny P MMA on YouTube, as well as Twitter and Instagram. But yeah, Benny P MMA originally reported this, but he wasn't too like rock solid on if it was going to be on 298 or 299. It's now confirmed for 299. I actually like Jack Della Maddalena in this matchup. I do believe... That, that takedown defense after the fight against Vasil Hafiz, I, I think he would have woken up and realized, man, this is a weakness in my game. I need to work on this. And Gilbert Burns is going to try and take him down. But it's worth noting, though, that Gilbert Burns just isn't any old wrestler. You know what I mean? He was able to out-wrestle, where is it, Wonderboy a couple of years ago when he did do it. He did beat Neil Magny by submission. Pretty good win there. Beat Jorge Masvidal, obviously, by out-wrestling him as well. That was a pretty bad performance from Masvidal, but Burns still beat him. And then he came back on short notice, slightly injured, and lost to Bilal Muhammad. But now he's taken on JDM. We know that Gilbert Burns is a dangerous grappler. We know that he's even a dangerous striker as well. So JDM's not just going to be safe with this guy on the feet. Gilbert Burns is the real deal. He's a guy that's fought for the title in the past. He's a guy that's trying to still chase the title at the age of almost 38 years old but to be honest Gilbert Burns looks pretty good for 38 in my opinion he does not look that old whatsoever but I do think JDM man I think his boxing is going to be good enough and I think he's going to be able to keep the fight on the feet and beat Gilbert Burns and does a win over Gilbert Burns warrant a title shot I'm gonna say potentially not because at the moment you've got Bilal trying to get a title shot you've got Shavkat trying to get a title shot I think JDM is going to have to beat Gilbert Burns and then beat somebody else. Like maybe he can fight. Maybe by then Luke's got a win. So he can do JDM versus Luke. JDM versus Wonderboy. Maybe even like JDM versus whoever's in the title competition. It could be Bilal. It could be Edwards. It could be Shavkat. It could be anyone. To get a shot at the title. I think a win here would put JDM one fight away from the title shot. So let me know what you think of that. And let me know what you think of that in general. Do you think that JDM gets a title shot with a win over Gilbert Burns? Personally, I think there's so many contenders right now, he's going to have to wait. But speaking of contenders at 170, you've got Jeff Neal and Ian Gary. And this is a big fight for Ian Gary because Jeff Neal is a good fighter. And I think Jeff Neal might even be a little bit underrated. But this is a good stylistic matchup for Ian Gary. And it is rebooked. We have already had the Ian Gary training camp against Jeff Neal. But now things have got a little bit more interesting. 
Because as you guys remember, in Gary went on that massive run. I guess you could call it a press run, but like a more of a social media sort of run. Trying to fight, well, when he was booked to fight against Jeff Neal with Jeff Neal's mugshot when he got done for, I, I believe it was a DUI, but I, I'm not 100% sure on that. So I know that Jeff Neal was arrested at some point. We've got his mugshot and in Gary put it on the t-shirt. But now, Jeff Neal, if Jeff Neal wants to retaliate, which honestly, I think he's in, in full, um, I guess, I don't know the word, he's in full allowance to do. We would understand if Jeff Neal was to go after N. Gary, because N. Gary tried to slander his name, you know what I mean, by doing that, by trying to belittle him. So if Jeff Neal wants to come back at N. Gary, because there's a lot of ammunition out there, and Vicente Luque was too nice of a guy to do it, maybe Jeff Neal was angry enough at N. Gary. I've never really seen Jeff Neal go heel or go out of his way to really talk trash about someone. So let's see if Jeff Neal can do that. He probably can. He probably will. Because at the end of the day, Ian Gary did try and trash his name. Um, so yeah, with that, so with those t-shirts. But at the end of the day, though, when it comes to the fight, I do think Ian Gary wins. But I think Jeff Neal's a harder matchup for him, though, than anyone else that he's for. I think that he's going to be, obviously, a tougher matchup than Magni. He's obviously going to be a tougher matchup than D-Rod. Jeff Neal made Shellcut look human. Now, yes, Wonderboy made Shellcut look human, but he didn't really do that much damage to him. Like, yes, he did outstrike him in moments, but Jeff Neal, in my opinion, had a really good performance against Shellcut, went to the third round with Shellcut, and did get Rene naked choked, obviously, up against the cage, standing. But he still went to the third round, to the end of the third round, and he made he just made Shellcut look human, because at that point... Everyone was talking about how dominant Shavkat is and how good he is. But I thought, in my opinion, Jeff Neal kind of toned it down a little bit. Now, obviously, Shavkat is a beast. People still think that. But I think Jeff Neal, you know, he, he had a good performance against Shavkat. He could have a good performance against N. Gary. But stylistically, I think it's a good matchup for N. Gary. As Jeff Neal's not going to try and wrestle him. Jeff Neal's more of a boxer that can wrestle. We haven't seen a lot of grappling out of N. Gary, so maybe it would be interesting if Jeff Neal wanted to try and exploit a potential weakness there. But let's just move on to the next matchup. Piotr Jan taking on Song Yadong. If Song Yadong beats Piotr Jan, I think that you could give him a title shot. But maybe that would be too soon. But at the end of the day, though, Song Yadong is on a crazy run right now. And if you look at his wins, he's beaten some really good guys, man. Like, he obviously has that win over Casey Kenny. Uh, I don't know what Casey Kenny's up to right now, but at that time, very good win. He's beaten Marlon Vera. Now, some people think that was a, a bad decision, and, and to be fair, it could have been, but Marlon Vera is now fighting for the title on this card. He's got that win over Vera. If Vera beats O'Malley, you could potentially sell this rematch. And then he did lose to Corey Sanhagen in a fight where... He was either 1-3 one or th one to three down or 2-2 two two going into the fifth round and lost due to that horrible cut he had over his eyebrow. Fantastic performance against Ricky Simone. Not as great performance against Chris Gutierrez, but that was only like a week ago at the time of me recording this video. So he's getting back in there quickly. He's taking on Piotr Jan, a former champion. I think he beats Piotr Jan. Um, this is a three-round fight. I just want to confirm. Dana White never mentioned anything, but I think this will be three rounds. There's a chance, though, because sometimes they like to make title eliminators five rounds. I think this will be a three-rounder, though. Maybe the winner of this fight, like Henry Cejudo or Morale, probably the loser of that fight. I think Song Yedong beats him, man. I know. It might sound weird to say because we know how good Piotr Jan's boxing is. We know how good his wrestling is as well. But I think that at this point, Song Yedong's going to be a little bit faster he can wrestle himself. He's getting better. That's one thing about Song Yudong is he is getting so much better, man. And he looks so good on the feet against Ricky Simone. I thought he looked very human against Chris Gutierrez, to be honest. Like, yes, he won. But he didn't look incredible in that matchup. But Piotr Jan, he lost to Marab in a fight which Marab just spammed takedowns. It was a typical Marab performance. But then he lost to Sean O'Malley in a fight he could have won. And he lost to Aljo in a fight which... Maybe he could have won. I do think that Sterling won that fight, though. Even though I'm not the biggest Sterling fan, I will admit that. I don't know, man. I just, I don't know. Maybe I'm just looking at numbers on a page and I'm seeing the momentum of Yan on his losing streak, which he very well could have won. I just think Song Yudong's that good. I think Song Yudong's going to be the underdog in this matchup as well. Maybe this is a horrible pick by me. Let me know what you think in the comments below. But I'm I'm pretty high on Song Yudong. I think he's the real deal. I think he's a future champion. I've never actually really said that about him. But he had a close fight with Corey Sanhagen. 
I think Corey Sanhagen is also the real deal. I think Corey Sanhagen would beat Piotr Jan. Song Yudong had success against him. He can mix up the wrestling and the boxing. And I'll tell you, he's a, better, he's a better striker than a wrestler, but his wrestling's really good as well. So I think he's kind of got the whole package to defeat a guy like Piotr Jan. But maybe we see a little classic vintage Piotr Jan and we see some really, really good boxing, some really good speed out of Piotr Jan. Because that's one thing I will say. Piotr Jan had one of the best fights I've ever seen when he beat Corey Sanhagen a couple of years ago. And that fight was an incredibly high-level striking matchup where both guys were making reads early in the fight and then using those reads to get the advantage on each other later in the fight. That was an incredibly high-level striking matchup and it was a showcase of how good kickboxers can be in the UFC. I think the Weasel even made a video on it. Uh, I don't usually champion the Weasel too much, but he made a good video on this one and it's really eye-opening to see how good and high level the boxing and the striking of Corey Sanhagen and Piotr Jan is. I think that was a very, very good win for Piotr Jan. But now let's move on to, I guess, maybe the big fight. I'm sorry for leaving it to last. And this is going to be a longer video than I planned. But let's talk about it. Kevin Holland taking on MVP. This is a good fight. This is a fight that's been rumored for a while. PFL was even um, kind of giving us the idea that MVP had signed to the PFL and MVP... Was going to be fighting against, uh, what was his name? Oh, Cedric Doombe. Sorry, his name slipped my mind for a second there. But yeah, MVP signed to the UFC officially. Good move by the UFC because they've lost out on a couple of like free agents. I know Edward Vatanian was very interested in signing to the UFC. If you don't know about him, give him a Google, Edward Vatanian. The UFC missed out on him. Would have been a good pickup, but hey. Now they've got uh, MVP. Smart pick. I think this is a good one. I think MVP, I mean, he's a former... Was he the champion or he fought, fought for the belt? I could be wrong on this one here. Man, okay, that was a bit bad because I probably should have <laughs> researched this, but I'm pretty confident. Did he win the interim title? No, he didn't. He fought for the belt against Logan Storley in that fight where there was a lot of wrestling and he didn't end up winning but then um a lot of people thought that he could have won and then he lost to mike perry and big kfc i mean dude he's been doing side missions but now he's in the mv in the ufc fighting for the ufc i think he can beat kevin holland so i've been beating around uh, for a bit before giving my prediction there i think mvp can beat kevin holland i do i do think he's quite a good fighter i think kevin holland's a fantastic fighter but the thing about kevin holland with me man that does just bother me a little bit, is I don't like his mindset. He seems like the guy that, um, and I'm the only one that said this, I think MMA Guru has been the one that's been saying this the most, but it is true. Kevin Holland seems like a guy that is content with losing, and I don't like that, you know what I mean? Like, he takes all these short-notice fights, he says that he doesn't care about being a champion, like, I know a lot of people probably don't really get into MMA to become a champion. Maybe it's for monetary gain. Maybe it's to become famous. But I feel like when you've got a guy as talented as Kevin Holland, I could see Kevin Holland, if he really, really committed to it, and he made his whole goal to become the champion, I think Kevin Holland could make a really good run. But I think his mindset and his, his almost willingness to not win is kind of holding him back. Like, he didn't take down Stephen Thompson in their matchup when they fought against each other. And then he took on JDM in a good fight, to be fair. Very good fight. JDM did win that matchup, though, even though it was close. Now he's taking on MVP. MVP is coming into the UFC, 37 years old, and knowing that if he ever wants to be a world champion in MMA, he has to do it now because he's 37 He's getting towards the end of his prime. I mean, you could even say maybe he's not in his prime anymore. He's a pure striker. A good stylistic matchup for Holland. But what makes it an even better stylistic matchup for MVP is the fact that we know how good Kevin Holland is at wrestling and grappling. Now, maybe his wrestling isn't great. But we know that Kevin Holland's a legit grappler. He does have a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And he is a good grappler. But he doesn't grapple anymore. He just strikes. And MVP is a pure striker. MVP is a really good striker. I think you can outstrike Kevin Holland in this matchup. It's only three rounds as well. We've seen MVP go five rounds before. I think we see Michael Venom Page come out here, win his UFC debut, and then maybe they could do something along... I mean, the thing about MVP is he's getting old. 
So I feel like he's not going to waste time. We might see him fight in like in London. Well, I mean, he's from London. So maybe he fights in London in like June, July. Maybe Tom Espinel headlines a card. Leon Edwards headlines a card. Maybe he headlines a card for the UFC. June, July, London. I don't think MVP is going to waste time, man. I think he's going to get right in there. He might beat Kevin Holland and call out the winner of Burns versus JDM. You never know, man. He might call out Ian Gary. Who knows what's going to happen, but I feel like MVP doesn't have time to waste. I think you might know that he doesn't have time to waste. I think he beats Kevin Holland and then makes a big run. If he loses to Kevin Holland, let's just use MVP for fun fights on pay-per-views. Maybe like MVP, like maybe versus like Santiago Pantanibio on a bad pay-per-view. You could probably do MVP versus Wonderboy. Win or lose. Probably if he wins, you want to do Wonderboy. But I think Wonderboy, even though I think that he's friends with MVP or training partners with MVP would probably be pretty interested in the fight. But yeah, I think I think you could use MVP, win or lose. You want him to win. You want him to win, because then you can use his name up the rankings and have him have some big fights. But if he loses, I think it's like MVP. Versus, I'm like, this is going to sound crazy, but like MVP versus like Nate Diaz, you know, or MVP versus like, I don't know, MVP <laughs> versus Matt Brown. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know what you do with MVP if he loses to Kevin Holland. That's all I'll say. But let me know what you think in the comments below. And um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. As I said in the intro, 2024 is going to be a massive year for the UFC. A massive year for MMA. I'm going to be here. I'm not going anywhere. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Let me know what you think of this card in the comments below. We're 11 fights in. We've got 11 great fights. This is a good card. I'm hyped for this card. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one.